Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. The Advocate Channel, Equal Pride, and Out Magazine are joining with iHeartMedia and Procter & Gamble for Can't Cancel Pride. It's one of the biggest Pride celebrations online, and the Advocate Channel is the official streaming partner. The celebration kicked off at New York's Club Nebula for the Out.com digital cover release party and the announcement of the full lineup of performers. The Advocate Channel's Stephen Walker caught up with drag queen legend Kevin Aviance on the red carpet. Why, why can't we cancel Pride? We can't cancel Pride because Pride is Pride. It's, it's, it's always going to be in June. It's always going to be celebration during the summertime. It's also my birthday. And um, it is important because we, I think this year is going to be a little bit different because it's more about protests because they're, they're like coming for us. You know what I mean? So we need to, instead of to celebrate, we need to like let these people know who we are. You know what I mean? Again. Yeah. You know, and the, uh, who are you most excited seeing at this year's Con Cancel Pride? Everybody. Yeah. It's a great lineup. It's a great lineup. This year, Jojo Siwa is your Can't Cancel Pride host. Performers will include Adam Lambert, Big Fridia, Brandi Carlisle, Ciara, Billy Porter, Haley Kiyoko, Kesha, and Kelsey Ballerini. During the event, Brandi Carlisle will also receive the Elton John Impact Award. Can't Cancel Pride has raised over 11 million in donations for LGBTQ groups since 2020. Can't Cancel Pride will stream live on the Advocate Channel June 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. The Writers Guild of America has now been on strike for more than a month. Writers are picketing outside of Netflix's New York offices. Writers say their salaries have not grown with the industry. Writers also want a slice of royalties for reruns and other showings. It's time to go under the sea. The live action remake of Disney's The Little Mermaid is about to hit theaters nationwide. And the cast is speaking about their influences for each character, drag queens being one of them. Out.com digital director Rafi Ermac spoke with Melissa McCarthy and Javier Bardem about how they drew inspiration for their roles as Ursula and King Triton. You've talked before about how, um, how much drag has inspired you, not in just the film, but your career. Um, are there any specific queens that uh, you uh, took inspiration from or that you kind of studied to prepare for this role? Well, for this one, you know, I I always go back to Divine. She mm -hmm. was the original inspiration for Ursula and uh, makes perfect sense to me. But also, like, I was always a big fan of Varla. Okay. I mean, there's a there's a there's such a wink and a poke and mm -hmm. it's an homage to the woman you love at the same time as you're almost almost making a little bit of fun of her but with a good a, sh a sharp wit but a good heart i mean so many of them i mean joey Harris back in the day of just that throaty kind of mm -hmm. you know bringing it from here i just have always been since my teens a huge fan of drag i think it's mm -hmm. an unbelievable art form and uh, i just i couldn't separate that from ursula i was like it's it's just inner and it's, uh, you know, and, I, and I, I just, I love to kind of shine the light because right now it's it's getting mm -hmm. a, boy, it's getting a hard time and mm -hmm. I, I just can't for the life of me figure out why. King Triton is also not, not a small role, but I think you added, again, a new depth to it and that we didn't get to see in the original animated film. I feel like you get to see more of his inspirations, his motivations. So you talk about embodying him, especially since, I don't know if you've seen online, people are calling him also the new, uh, undersea daddy. <laughs> oh, it's daddy thing. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Daddy's what the, the girls call you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the girls. Uh, the women and the girls. <laughs> okay. I mean the girls. Girls yeah. are boys. Cool. Listen, if it's about love, I'm all about love. <laughs> it's all good. Welcome them all. Uh, so I'm there under the seat, Daddy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's pretty I don't good. Like that. I'm gonna get that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the big daddy of the ocean. Yes, exactly. Yes. I feel there is a little bit more depth on the relationship between him and his daughter. Yes, mm -hmm. than in the original. But uh, but it's all about love. It's about respect. It's about really seeing the other rather than imagining or trying to figure out, trying to construct the other in the way, shape, or form that we intend or wish is about seeing the other and accepting that the other is not is different from us and accepting it and welcoming it i love that and again such universally relatable themes and it's nice to see it all come to life like in color when yeah on the big and in screen. a big way mm -hmm. yes, like beautiful. really really important mm -hmm. things but done with fun and uh but they mean something mm. yeah i wish i could talk to you guys all afternoon but that's i'm getting the wraps in my mind thank fault. you <laughs> It's his fault. He doesn't. We don't even know who he is. No. 
He just makes people come in and then oh, makes yeah. them leave. It's very rude. He hasn't even said hello to us in the three days. Oh, damn. He's a ninja. The Little Mermaid hits theaters May 26th. The Little Mermaid isn't the only film hoping to make a splash this summer. Harrison Ford is back one more time as Indiana Jones. The movie received a standing ovation at the Cannes Film Festival. Ford says he's honored to bring the iconic professor and archaeologist back to fans. You don't make a film for yourself. You make it for an audience. And this is the first time I've seen it with a proper audience and a very <laughs> distinguished and and uh, uh, an audience of many of the people who work in our industry. And uh, I was very gratified by it. I, I think Jim Mangold made a terrific movie. I think the performances from Phoebe and from Mads Nicholson and from all the other cast were brilliant. And I, I was just very moved by it. And it was a very nice uh, nod to my career uh, and uh, it made me realize how lucky I am. It's jam-packed with so much action, so much heart, and so much thrill. Um, I think people are going to really be surprised by what they see on screen, but also really, really happy about where the franchise is going and where it ends. It was amazing. This movie is amazing. Thank you, James Mangold. I loved it. And I still can't realize this is happening. It doesn't feel real. I'm so happy. Thank you all for being here and for watching this movie. Go watch this movie in theaters. It's an amazing movie. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny hits theaters on June 30th. Last Dance, She Works Hard for the Money, and I Feel Love. Those are just some of the hits of the legendary Donna Summer. Her songs are more like anthems. Now, fans can relive the magic in the HBO documentary Love to Love You, Donna Summer, directed by her daughter, Brooklyn Sudano, and Roger Ross Williams. You know, I wanted to do a film that was honest. And one of the things that I knew about Roger's work was that it was very honest honest, it was emotional, it was truthful. And that was the kind of film that I wanted to make. And so it was, I, I tried to make it very clear that I don't want to do some kind of sanitized version of my mother's life. Like I want to tell the real story. And I think that would be the most impactful and the most actually honoring to her legacy by being truthful. Yeah. Incredible. Well, I, I also I wonder when you were going through some of this archival footage and and your own memories, really, um, well, what were some of the earliest threads that stood out that you knew that had to be included? Well, I think one of the things that I knew was an asset was the home videos that we had. My my mom was an early adopter on technology and always had a video camera or uh, a can, you know, a photography camera, always taking pictures. And so really looking at some of those, you know, unfiltered moments that I just thought were really reflective of who she really was and our family dynamic. And, and so showing Roger that was really, you know. Yeah. When I saw, I think the first thing I think Brooklyn sent me on the, uh, texted me yeah. this little tiny video of um, her by the pool and uh, her mom saying asking her to sing hard for the money yes. and then she turns the camera on herself and she's like I work hard for the money I'm not gonna sing it and I'm <laughs> gonna sing it as like I'm not oh no do <laughs> um, and um, uh, and I. Um, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Um, and then I was like, the home movies, this is a side of Donna Summer, you know, global superstar that we don't get to see. And that was what was really important to both of us was how do we make a film that is not another behind the music kind of film, but it is really about this private person that, is a true artist and complex as all artists are, all people are. That's all the time we have today. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and that's what's happening in entertainment.